Hi, it's Jo from Minerva. Welcome along to a Coco sweatshirt top sew along for the Tilly and the Buttons Coco top or tunic. This is a very popular pattern. If you search on Minerva, you will find lots of uh, makers have had a go at this and you can see some of the fabrics that they've chosen. You'll need to choose quite a thick jersey or a Ponte Roma, um, an interlock knit, but nothing too drapey or you'll end up with a very saggy looking top because the top has some positive ease. Positive ease is when um, the sleeves won't be tight to your arm, so there'll be some sort of looseness in the sleeves. There's a cuff option which you can put on and there's a funnel neck option which you can also use. If you're looking for a pattern to go underneath a pinafore or as an underlayer, then you might want to look at the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons instead because that one's got negative ease, so that one will stretch around your arms and cling. So it depends what fabric you've got and what look you're looking for. Tilly and the Buttons patterns have fabulous instructions, a photo for each stage, which is useful if you're beginning, and some useful information at the beginning about sewing stretch. Don't forget if you're swapping views to miss out some of them and follow the instruction for where to follow on from next. The neckline on the Coco is quite an open neck, a sort of boat neck shape. So the funnel neck that goes on it is quite wide as well, meaning um, that you can't really get a cardigan on top because your funnel neck is coming out to about here. So I've made the funnel neck top before and then found that I can only wear that top on its own. I can't wear it with a cardigan on top because then I squash the funnel neck down and I get this sort of funny fold at the front. So think about what you want to use your top for and what fabric you've got. The other thing about the neck is if you don't put the funnel neck on and you're not very confident in putting a neck band on like this one, then um, this top has a fold over band. So to get that open boat neck shape, it doesn't have a band on it. It has um, a double hem fold. So I can show you a couple of stitch options for that as well. Today I'm going to use a jersey. So this is a jersey stretch, black and white stretch. It's a four-way stretch, but you can use a two-way stretch on this pattern, but you need to make sure that you cut with the stretch going across your bust and waist and hips. Here are some tips for cutting out. I'm cutting out the top on the cutting table and some little tips will pop up as I speed along. <laughs>
Okay, let's sew. Um, we'll set up our sewing machine first. So you can sew the whole of the cocoa top on a normal sewing machine and you'll need to use a zigzag stitch that's very, very narrow. So uh, you will put your machine on zigzag and then, it, depending if you use a dial or you've got digital, you need to make sure that the stitch width, that's the one that's got the symbol for a, the width of a zigzag, that needs to be really, really narrow, like 0.5 or 0. And then you need your stitch length to be about 2.5 or 3, because what you want is you want a very narrow zigzag. You don't want the zigzag to be going like this. I'll show you how it works. So if I just put my stick, my sewing machine on zigzag and sew, I'll get a zigzag stitch, but when I open up the seam, I'll have quite a jaggedy sewing edge because there's a gap between every zigzag, between every point on the zigzag. So what I'm aiming for is a very shallow zigzag. So I'm going to change the width down to nothing. And I'm going to take my length up to three. And now I'll get a stitch. That's this one here. It's virtually straight. It looks like a sort of wobbly um, straight stitch, but it still allows the fabric to stretch because you've changed the stitch length. And from the right side, I've got a completely enclosed seam. I don't have any little spikes through. If you try and sew it with a straight stitch, it won't stretch so when you put your jumper over your head listen it won't stretch and it will break the stitching so you need to use a zigzag stitch as a stretch stitch you might have a stretch stitch on your machine anyway or a lightning stitch and a lightning stitch is a sort of zigzag on a slant so have a look what you've got on your machine if you've got a dial machine then make sure you can get your zigzag onto the smallest one and have a little test and you can have a go at that break test and check that you're still getting stretch but the seam that you will see on the outside is nice and smooth. The first part of the pattern is to stay stitched the neckline. So in terms of what I've just said about stretch, we want it a stretch stitch and we want it to be stretchy around here but we want to make sure that the neckline doesn't stretch out. So we're going to put a straight stitch around the neckline, around the separate pieces. And this is called stay stitching. And that now will stop that stretching out because that is a straight stitch. And now we can switch onto the stretch to sew the main body together. So I've got some um, elastic. This is in the product list below. It's a stabilising elastic for shoulders. It's really, really firm. And I'm going to measure the length of the back shoulder seams and cut two pieces, one for each shoulder. And you apply this to the back shoulders, but it stabilises the whole of your shoulder. And then I'm going to zigzag those within the seam allowance. The elastic goes on the wrong side of the back shoulder seam and that's zigzagged on. So now I've got a tiny bit of give, but not like the other side, which could stretch out after washing. So that's what stabilising some shoulders is. And that's how it works. Next stage is to put the front and back right sides together match the notches on the shoulder seam and you'll see that's where your elastic stays within the seam allowance or your tape or whatever you use to stabilize 
you can just use um, little bits of ribbon and sew that seam at 1.5. I'm making the plain version so I'm going to turn the neckline finish now so I'm going to press one centimeter down of the neckline and stitch in place now you can experiment here on your um, scrap piece of fabric have a look on your machine see what stitches you can use you can zigzag that down you'll get a zigzag finish on the front you can just do a straight stitch and you'll get a straight stitch around if you want, if you've got an overlocker, you can overlock the edge of that and then fold it down. But your um, edge of jersey will not fray, so you can just turn that down flat. And just if you're using stripes, just make sure that you're keeping those stripes nice and even and you're not stretching them out. So we're going to finish the neckline by just turning down by one centimetre and stitching the edge. I found a uh, slightly decorative zigzag that I could use on my machine. So I've got a sort of, uh, it's like an overlock zigzag. So it overlocked all the edge down, but it left a nice finish on the other side. So have a little look on your machine. You might have something that works for that or a normal zigzag would work just as well. So you get a really flat boat neckline. If you're adding the funnel neck, that's uh, what you add now so you'll be making a tube for the neck and quartering it with pins and then positioning it around the neck it's not tricky and um, it's similar to the cuff technique so when I show you the cuffs I'll remind you that that also works for the funnel neck next we're going to put the sleeves in lay out your top with the right side up and then we're going to put the sleeve piece right sides together and you will have cut some notches so two little notches snipped in the sleeve is the back armhole edge and one little notch is the front but you need to make sure you're getting them the right way round and then you find the notches on your top and match them with the notches on your sleeve i've got a, a narrow stripe here so um I'm going to just match up my stripes at the same time because I did that when I was cutting out I matched the notch to make sure that the notch on the front and back match the notch on the sleeve or the other one and make sure that they touch it's easy to put your pins in with the the pin point sticking out because then you can get lots of pins in your top more than if you just put them parallel there's a notch at the top and that goes on the shoulder seam and you need to have your seam allowances pointing towards the back because that's what I did when I made the neck so everything's going in the same direction and then you can start to ease the sleeve in now this is easy with stretch fabrics than any other fabric because you can just give it a little stretch but you'll need lots of pins to hold that in place if, obviously if you're trying to match stripes you're not going to get stripes to match all the way around a curve but you'll want to so the head of the curve, the head of the sleeve won't have matching uh, stripes but you could match lower down here so from here, you'll see matching stripes and you work your way around and then you're going to sew the sleeve in flat. So you should have really smooth sleeve heads. If you've done any stripe matching along here, that should show. It doesn't matter if you haven't with a narrow stripe. And so now 
it's time to move on to the next bit now i don't normally swap the order of a sew along because i think it's important that you see it the way it is in the pattern book bit but after doing the sleeves it then shows you how to um do the sides but if you're putting a little pocket on i think while the top is open is the best way to put a pocket on because you can manipulate this under the machine better and heaven knows putting a jersey pocket on is hard enough without having to sort of get it under the machine and stretch everything out of shape so i'm going to skip to the pocket and then put that on and then i'm going to sew up the sides to make the pocket you fold down a 15 mil seam allowance along the top of your pocket and press it but you're not going to sew along there you are then going to measure 15 mil in to the edge and mark and the same on the other side and mark and you're going to sew just that top down it's probably best to show you in the picture you fold that down and stitch just the ends and then we'll fold it through If it's all pressed down, uh, you get a slightly better finish on the corners. It is tricky to put a jersey pocket on because on these corners it tends to sort of stretch out. So you really need to make sure that it's square and that's all tucked in. The one that you've done the corners on, that's the top. And the one with the fold is the bottom. And then I'll show you how to sew it onto the top. Normally on a pattern sheet you will have markings for where to place the pocket but um, on this pattern you are advised to try it on and put it where you want it which seems a good idea to me because you could have it here at as a breast pocket or you could have it down here as a hip pocket but I might wear my t-shirt tucked in so I'm going to have it up here and I'm going to pin it in place and actually, because it's jersey, I'm going to tack it in place as well because it's just a little bit more movable under the machine. So I'd like to make sure that that is absolutely square before I start stitching. There we are, that's the pocket. You can put little triangles on the edge, but I didn't want to risk it because I'd got it really nicely lined up with the stripes along the bottom. And I just didn't want it to stretch out past that... Um, stripe across the top so i didn't want it to sort of um pull up on one end it is tricky that it's not an easy sew to put that little pocket on have a practice on a scrap piece first maybe um i mean it doesn't bring much to the party in terms of a pocket it is a way of adding a different splash of color okay let's get back on to the sewing instructions in the right order Right, we're going to put the top right sides together, the wrong side showing us, and we're going to pin along the side seam, and obviously in my case I'm going to be trying to match some stripes at the same time. So the first point I'm going to pin is the underarm, and then I'm going to look for notches because of course when I was cutting out I tried to get my notches to both be on dark stripe so I can pin that that's my next point and then I can make sure that all of these stripes are matching along this side seam I might take a little bit more care and pin more than I normally would for a side seam because I'm matching stripes and then if you're making the top version which I am you need to find some markings that you put on 
which are small circles there it is and that's to mark the side split I'm going to put two pins next to each other there and that's a little reminder for me that I need to stop stitching there and then I'm going to carry on matching the stripes on there I've also got notches on my sleeve to match up my sleeve seam so that will also help match my stripes along there so I can put um, a black one on a black one because that's what I did when I cut out and it's a bit easier with thin stripes because you can just stretch it to the next stripe or adjust it a little bit but that's going to be more tricky with um a wider stripe you will definitely be using your notches to mark up match up stripes and mark stripes when you're cutting out and there's your stripes matched up there under the side seam and then I've stopped there for the split opening So you press the seam open and you press the seam allowance of the split back and then under the machine you're going to top stitch that down, 5mm from the edge, get to the end, pivot, turn and then go back down the other side. The hem will be dealt with later so you just need to work the side splits first. getting there so we've got a top now without uh, any cuffs or a hem so I'm going to make the cuffs and show you how to do that and that's the same technique as if you were putting the funnel neck on so you will need to um, still continue to use the stretch stitch and we're going to um, put the cuffs around the cuff band of course if you're not doing the cuffs then um, you can finish that hem off and you can finish the hem around the hem band and you're done but um, I'm going to show you the cuffs and then I'll go back and show you a few techniques for, for having a, a really flat hem. Okay, to make the cuffs, you're going to fold um, the seam in half. I took out two seams, so I've, um, I've only got one seam in mine, but you'd be sewing down both sides. I was just trying to avoid another seam that I had to try and keep the stripes on. So that's the seam I've matched my stripes on, but I didn't want to have to try and do it again on the other side. So I just adjusted the seam width when I cut the cuff. And then when you've done that, then you can fold your cuff in half. With the seam on the outside and the wrong sides together inside. And it's important if you've got stripes that you have a nice stripe it's not so important to have the raw edge here matching but what you want is you want a nice run out of the stripe around the bottom of your cuff so you don't want that to that's it so I've got a white edge on my cuff with a black stripe next and that's the same all the way around so you don't want that to be twisted after you've pinned them and you're sure you've got your um, edge level then you can machine base those so I've just whizzed that through the machine and I've sewn a one centimeter um, allowance that's within the seam allowance and I'm going to use that as a guide when I slip the cuffs over the sleeves with the right sides together we're going to slip the cuff over the sleeve and we're going to match up the seam the sleeve seam and pin it and then you'll have a notch on the other side which is the halfway point so that's halfway over here I'm going to pin that and that's what you do if you're putting on the funnel neck you'd mark it in four places in half and then in quarter and match those up 
with the halfway and the quarter markings on a neckline so it's the same thing match up the raw edges i'm not going to put many pins in because i don't want to be getting congested under the machine foot and then you're going to sew it um, don't stretch this over your um, machine because if you stretch that round there then you're going to get quite a free edge because you've overstretched the fabric so keep keep everything in place and stitch it from the inside so that you're going so that you're going inside the circle and you'll have much more control and you won't catch any other parts of the top once you've attached that you're going to open out the sleeve and push all of that seam allowance up inside the shirt i'm just going to pin it to sort of show you where it is So all of the seam, this is the cuff and the seam allowance is pointing up inside the sleeve and this next move is a little bit of a tricky manoeuvre because you've got to try and sort of get this under the machine but I'll show you where I want you to stitch. So I want you to stitch, it's like an understitch but it's it will be behind the cuff. So I'm, I want you to zigzag along the sleeve, don't touch the cuff along the sleeve and that will hold down all of the seam allowances on the inside but you can only sew a little bit at a time but it is possible That's it. and you've got to keep just pulling the next sort of inch of sleeve around so you're going to be sort of sewing it an inch at a time in a sort of little bowl shape and I'll show you what that does so it means that all the seam allowance is pointing up towards your top up towards the sleeve those bits so now when you fold your cuff back halfway let's try and match a stripe up because it looks nice and even so when you fold your cuff back halfway none of this is popping back out for anyone to see and it stays neat underneath there so that will be your cuff then and all of those seam allowances inside are now all attached down to stop this cuff sort of flipping out you can do a little hand stitch on the seam line here or you can stitch in the ditch which is what i'm going to do because i definitely know i'm going to be wearing this with a cuff all of the time and i don't want them to flop down a stitch in a ditch is when you sew from the top so from the right side facing and you sew inside the seam line through all layers and then you wouldn't even know that that was being held up by a stitch line okay there are a couple of things you can do to stop you getting a wobbly hem and one of them is to put some grease proof paper underneath your hem so that when you're sewing it the feed dogs aren't gripping on stretchy fabric the feed dogs can very evenly uh, move the shiny paper through so let's just see what that looks like and uh, let's put this little zigzag on or do you put the straight zigzag i think i have And then you take the paper off the back and your hem is not wobbly it's absolutely straight 
sometimes if you do a hem on a jersey by just turning over because the feed dogs are gripping on stretchy fabric it stretches it through at a different weight to the foot on the top so you can see the one on the bottom that I did without grease proof paper is wobbly it's not too bad to be honest but this one is wobbly but this one is really straight and that's a good and it's still got the stretch because I used the straight stitch but it just takes the fabric through the machine better you could also try um, a little bit of spray starch like just to um, put it through the machine so that you can fold it over and press it very evenly without it stretching out of shape and you can also try putting a little bit of a very lightweight hem it um, which is like a sort of very thin strip of interfacing underneath and then you can when you press your two centimeter hem down you've really sort of glued it all down and then you can sew your hem but that won't be quite so stretchy but this top's got side splits and it's got positive ease so that would work so there's a couple of different options for you to try there you need to pin up your top at a two centimeter seam allowance and choose how you're going to sew it down so that can be either a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch okay this is the top finished so you can see it's got quite a wide neckline it lies flat and that's just turned over straight so that's a very stable neckline because we stay stitched that the shoulders nice and neat and that's not going to stretch out because that shoulder sits right on the edge of your shoulder so you don't want that to start going down like this I've got my pocket nice and neat and that is a little bit tricky I love the way I can have it pulled up with a cuff that's really my kind of style and on the hem band got the splits here so it's quite a long style if you want it to be more boxy like this sort of shape then you would need to adjust the length that's actually a better style on me I've made it to wear with a yellow skirt so I'm going to be tucking it in but um, you can have it with the split or you can have it the full length tunic style so that's the pocket and the neckline and the arm shaping and you can see it's not tight the fabric is from the Minerva core range it's um, a little fine stripe and it comes in uh, 14 or 17 different colors so take a look at those colors and also it's a really thick jersey so it's suitable for dresses tops t-shirts children's leggings um, there's lots if you look up what makers have made with this there's a huge range of clothes because it's not just a thin t-shirt material it's got a real substance to it. it does come in different width of stripes too you can also make the cocoa top as a tunic and then you can wear it with leggings and you can also try the funnel neck but it really is a top for a thicker jersey knit so you'll be looking for a heavy stretch a medium but not and nothing light and nothing drapey and, and, and not with viscose you'll get a really different feeling top so if you're looking for something like a ponty roma a textured knit or a heavyweight knit and I'll list some of those fabrics below so that you can see the sort of weight that you need to be looking for you can also make the cocoa in a sweatshirt knit like a light French terry something that's got a little bit of movement in and that'll give you a little bit of a stand on the collar because if you tried to chew the funnel in this um, t-shirt material it might sort of flop down a bit but if you try a sweatshirt fabric you'll get more of a, a funnel neck that stands up there's a lovely example here all the products that I've used are listed below so you can go and have a browse and don't forget to make a profile for yourself and share your makes on Minerva you can also join the Minerva Club and receive special offers and promotions throughout the year. I hope from today's tutorial you've learned a few tips for sewing stretch fabrics. Have a go on some practice fabric first so that you can make sure that you get the right finish around your neckline and around your hem. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.